Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we are working on our Death Guard. Uh, now I've got the combination of the Dark Imperium box set uh, 7 that came with the, the starter box there. And then I've got the 3 pack uh, that came on its own individually. And together they're going to make up my two 5 man squads of Death Guard. Now uh, obviously I could have like a big 10 man horde uh, running around but this way I like it a little bit better. It's got a little bit more diversity and they're really, really tough. So I don't think you need the, the full, uh, you know, a, you know, full blob of 10. Uh, this way you can actually get stuff done. So models obviously are fantastic. Uh, I've done a big review on both of these sets and uh, I really like the way they turned out. Now there's so much detail going on in here. We're going to like the Primaris uh, Marine video. We're going to break it up into a couple of parts. Uh, the Primaris uh, videos ended up being a little bit more than the three parts I initially planned, but uh, we're just going to start calling this part one and go from there. So we're going to start off basically with our armor, and um, I'm going to go from white. Now there is the Death Guard spray, but the color I'm looking for is a, a lot brighter, a lot more kind of contrast, and that's that's what I'm shooting for. Uh, in future videos, we'll be doing things like uh, corrosion on the weapons, which will be pretty sweet. Uh, we'll be focusing on, uh, you know, like the little tuft of smoke here off the sensors and all of that. But uh, hopefully it won't be too many, but uh, let's get going. So I'm going to start priming these guys in Korax White, and then I'll be right back. All right, as you can see, we've got them all primed up in Korax White. And, uh, you know, just a nice thin coat of primer on everything. It unifies all the colors. And I know there is the Death Guard spray, but I really like that nice kind of bright high contrast uh, kind of look and feel to it here. So um, let's uh, get going. I'm going to be batch painting things, which means essentially if you see me do it on one, if I paint the armor on one or I paint the knife on one, I'm going to paint that on all the rest of our, our Death Guard dudes. Uh, that's, that's just because, you know, this guy's got a fly. This one's got, you know, kind of a sensor with smoke coming out. This one's got the cool stacks coming out. Uh, so all of these different guys are going to have different attributes, so I'm going to start with the most common ones, and that's going to be essentially the armor and the flesh right away. So let me just uh, clear these guys out of here, and we'll start painting on our one model, but then carrying it on to the rest. So we've got probably my favorite one out of all the models so far. He's got this really kind of cool, nice dynamic pose. Uh, very different from, you know, kind of the uh, multi-part kits because, of course, he's a push fit guy. Uh, and so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a little bit of our uh, thin down Nurgling Green and I'll just go over everything that is going to be the armor. Oh, and the flesh as well. Because the, uh, the flesh and the armor kind of mute together, uh, or kind of mold together through the disease. Uh, I'm going to do anything flesh-wise, and I'm going to do anything armor-wise. So we can see here that, uh, which is the sampling of the 10, I've just, I've just picked four of the 10 here. Man, are they ever bright and green, which is pretty cool because we're going for the high contrast scheme. So we're going to be going with the darker golds and all that for the, the shoulder pads and, and you name it. So uh, the next step for us here is going to be working on the bone elements. And for that, we're going to be using our friend Screaming Skull here. And um, I just wanted to kind of observe what we're going to be going after. So uh, anything that's coming out of a piece of armor here uh, clearly is going to be uh, a bone scheme. So anything kind of sharp uh, is going to be bone and you can see that that this isn't so much a tentacle here this is actually a, a bit of bone you can see they've done a bit of a porous kind of detail to it uh, any of the skulls and oh man there are skulls everywhere uh, we're going to do that anything with teeth so the the, the demon here up on the shoulder pad uh, you name it now anything that is a tentacle so anything that's kind of smoothed out here, uh, you'll see this guy here. We're going to be doing in a different color. And uh, where is it here? Yeah, so there's one guy holding uh, an, an item there. Uh, this guy is kind of a weird one. You'll see here he's got his, his hand, but he's got a tentacle kind of replacing a couple of the fingers there. So anything to do with um, uh, tentacles, we're going to be doing a different color. So let's, uh, let's get to it. So I'm just going to use my Screaming Skull. And again, I'm going to be going over any kind of uh, bone detail here. Let's give this a good shake. Any kind of bone detail I'm going to be doing in Screaming Skull. And it's going to be uh, just a couple thin coats. And just like that, I'll be going over all these protruding kind of bone elements here. Uh, I'll be going after the teeth in here with the bone. Um, any, you know, horns on heads. And of course, it is, uh, it's GW, so 
anything to do with skulls, whether it's on the packs or on the uh, power fists, you name it, anything to do with skulls, bone or teeth, we'll be doing in Screaming Skull. With all the bone elements done, as you can see here, uh, it's looking pretty decent. Now they're very similar to each other in terms of color, but it really comes out later in the wash. This all comes out later in the wash, I suppose. Uh, bad pun. Uh, next up, we're going to be working on a little bit of our contrasting elements. So we're going to start with our tentacles now. Now all this pointy, jaggedy, antlery type stuff that we've done has all been bone. And now we're going to work on the tentacles themselves. All right, so anything with uh, tentacles or tentacle elements to it is going to get Nagaroth Knight, which is of course our base uh, for our purple and we're just going to do just basically a coat over all of the purple elements now we're gonna go much lighter than this in a bit uh, after the wash and all that but we want that nice deep purple as a base for our tentacles and you'll see them all over the place I think there's actually more tentacle elements now than skull elements or bone elements on these guys Okay, so with the purple all done on our tentacle parts here, uh, you'll find that it's a very big, bold, bright color, but we're going to be darkening down the armor with the metallics and all of that, uh, and then with the wash and then the black lining, so I think I think we're still going to be okay, uh, but we just want to make sure we get that nice bright contrast, and, and then the tentacles will lighten up as well as we paint them progressively lighter and lighter colors, so uh, pretty sweet looking, uh, really liking the way that they, uh, they turned out here. This guy's kind of the most tentacly of all of them, and even then it won't take away from the model, uh, model too much, I don't think, so. Uh, next up, we're going to be working on on our fetishes and any kind of iconography. Now, uh, if you've read any of the Death Guard uh, books or the uh, anything about the Plague Marines, they really don't like a whole lot of ornamentation to them. They're not these big kind of, uh, you know, these big kind of, you know, scrolls everywhere type people. Uh, but they do have their own kind of symbolic elements. So uh, let's start off with, uh, with this guy here. So I'm going to take my Balthazar Gold and I'm just going to go over uh, all of the bells. So even the ornamentation they do have, it's not going to be this kind of high-end, you know, really bright gold. It's going to be kind of this tarnished, uh, older, older type gold as well. So I'll go over and I'll do all the bells and you'll see that it'll brighten up the model in some senses. It'll darken it down because it's kind of a deeper shade. Uh, so it should be pretty good. So in addition to the bells, we'll be doing the, the sensors as well. And we'll also do the fetishes, any kind of jewelry hanging down, and they're kind of all over. Uh, on top of that, we'll also do any of these little icons that are kind of hanging off. Or if we've got the little fly blown symbol here, we'll do that in the Balthazar gold as well. And we'll also do the shoulder pauldrons here in the Balthazar Gold. So these rings that go around the top. And like the sensors, anything emitting anything. So these kind of chimney smokestacky thing thingamadoos up top here very steampunk. Uh, these guys here we'll do in the Balthazar gold as well and we'll just kind of bronze them up nicely. So it took a little bit of time to get the gold onto everything. I was actually surprised by the amount of detail that ended up actually happening on here. Uh, added a bunch of other stuff in as well as I kind of saw fit. Uh, there's the bolter shells coming off of the uh, um, off of this kind of band of ammunition that's 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 hanging out of there. Obviously, the bells were uh, integral to the fetishes, the sensors, all of that. So looks nice and sharp. Uh, what else did I find in there? Of course, uh, the the 
the vents here on here. I just picked kind of the larger ones. I'll do the smaller um, the, the smaller exhausts here in in a, in a silvery color as well. But again, the sensors and all that. And man, as I went through, I, I found a ton of extra little tentacles and bits. There's just so much detail on these models. It's uh, it's it's pretty nuts. Now, um, so I found mentioned the extra tentacles. Oh yeah, and then uh, I was debating a little bit about what to do about. Uh, our sergeant here, our champions fly, and I think I'm just going to do him in the the same kind of nurgly flesh colors, just to simplify and tie it all together. I was thinking like brown or black, but I think we'll just tie it all together, and it still brings up that brightness because when you see it contrasted against the dark, if I contrast that against the green, uh, it'll stand out a little bit better. So. So anyway, so uh, lots and lots of detail, and of course it's all up to you and how you want to put it together. But I uh, really like the the look and feel of it. Uh, we did the plasma noses here as well, uh, which is kind of cool. Uh, just so that it's got that more kind of steampunky, kind of old technology type look to it. So the next thing we're going to work on now is the next big, big piece. And that is going to be our lead belcher here to do all of our metallics. So I've got my three guys here, uh, now obviously the representative of the whole mess, but I'm going to be using lead belcher here and I'm just going to be picking up on some of the basic details. Now for the sword, uh, all their plague swords, uh, I'm going to do them up in our lead belcher color and uh, eventually we're just going to wash it and then we're going to come in and rust it in the other part uh, of the video. But I'm just going to do up the swords and the hilts and all of that. Now, the Death Guard themselves, uh, as an army, or the Plague Marines specifically, they don't really have, they're not really big on a lot of decoration, so I want to keep it fairly muted, uh, the, the, the golds and stuff, whereas on a Space Marine you'd be doing the hilts and all of that. But I just want these rusted, kind of plaguey swords to stand out for themselves. Uh, the next step is going to be doing the chainmail that you'll see as an element all the way throughout as well. So we'll do the chain mail, and sometimes we'll just do it in circles. Of course, if your paint's thinned down a little bit, it goes in a little bit easier, which is always nice. Uh, in addition to that, we'll be working on our cabling. So anytime that you see any of this ribbed cabling in here, uh, we'll be doing painting that as well. And anything that is functional. So uh, I'll use this guy for that example there. Anything that's functional. So on the back of the, the legs, each of them have this kind of grill on the back. So I'll be doing that for everybody. Uh, I'll also be doing a little more paint here. Uh, I'll also be doing uh, anything functional. I do this with all the Space Marines and all that. So any of these kind of ribbed joint pieces in here. Uh, we'll do that. Uh, on the backpacks, we'll be doing the exhaust vents on the bottom of the packs. Uh, any of the cabling in here, uh, we'll be doing in the, um, in, in, the, in, the, in the lead belcher. Now, they've got some covered cabling that you'll see throughout, and that I'm going to leave as kind of a, a leathery coated. Again, very, very basic uh, very, very, very basic type of, of covering for those. Uh, and I'll also be doing the packs at the top in the lead belcher as well. And where I'm going to do them is these vertical stripes, these metallic bands that come up the top. I'm going to do that there as well. And anything that isn't kind of a, uh, a, a decoration, uh, for example, the shoulder pads or the sensors or what have you. Anything that's just kind of a basic metal uh, function of the armor. And this little spike up here at the top and on the heads, basically, they've all got these kind of chaos -y symbols. Uh, I'm going to do that in the lead belcher as well. The uh, little pieces on the side of the helmets. You can see that. It's a little tricky to get in there with the camera. But these pieces on the sides of the helmets is there a better one? No, I use all tubes. Let's see if we can get in here. The pieces on the sides of the helmets here will do in the lead belcher as well. And on top of that, any of the trim on the armor is going to be done with lead belcher. So uh, you'll see here with our guy, I'm just going to go and trim it just like this. But he's helping out. 
So I'll do a trim on the outside of the armor and there'll be a little bit that just kind of faces the top. So I'll just do like an edge of that as well. And you'll see that throughout uh, the knee joints uh, here. You'll see them uh, kind of like the, the joints around the armor, things like that. So I'm just going to trim all of that in lead belch here, just super carefully, just like this. Steady hand time for sure. All right, what else? Uh, on our on our gentleman here with all the elements at the top, these little exhaust events here, these little stacks. Uh, again, I'm just going to go in. I, I did the bands here in the uh, Balthazar Gold, and I'll just fill it in here with the lead belcher. All right. So I'll work my way around there and it'll have this nice kind of steampunky look to it. Uh, any of the exhaust vents in the back, we'll do that. And then we'll do the edging around the exhaust vents. Uh, very similar to what we've done with our Space Marine stuff before, because you know, they're Space Marines, just of the Chaos variety. And uh, we covered the swords. Oh, and any of the blight grenades as well. Blight grenades, bolters, anything functional on here. Uh, spikes, right? The whole spike structure up here. Uh, the blight grenades. I'll just work my way around the skulls here because I did those all in bone earlier. So the blight grenades themselves, the little kind of trencher style grenades. Uh, we'll do those. The little grenades in the pack. Uh, all of the fans and the the layers on the outside, and then of course on the bolters themselves and on our blight grenade launcher, our blight launcher here. Uh, the bolters themselves, paying really close attention to some of the detail that's in here. You can already see I missed the bolter shells on the inside, so I'll do that in the Balthazar Gold as I do a repass. But just anything to do with the clips. Uh, you'll see that there's a whole bunch of wood kind of features on here as well. So anything else, I'll just do anything functional, I'll do in the, the lead belcher. Uh, the grenades on his grenade pack here, we'll do those as well in the lead belcher. So really quite a bit of the model is going to be this kind of functional uh, silver, this lead belcher. And the reason that is, is because uh, if you read any of the fluff, you know, the Death Guard, they're just not big into a lot of decoration. Obviously all their, you know, all their, uh, you know, kind of homages to their, uh, to their patron god, the three skulls everywhere uh, type thing. But... Uh, for the most part, they're going to stick with mostly functional, and then we'll have the rotting armor. And that, that'll add a whole lot of depth to our models. All right, so that was a, a big chunk of time, but uh, I just wanted to kind of go over all the many little details that are in here. So anything functional uh, or any of the chainmail, things like that, we'll do in the lead belcher. So after finishing up the metallic elements, um, you can see that we've got lots of of depth and character back to the models. They were looking a little cartoony before, not that they don't now, they, they really grid up once we get that wash on there. Uh, but uh, it looks a lot nicer, the balance of the colors is a lot better. Uh, you can see that uh, some of the schemes have really come together, so you'll see here with the um, with the pipes, the stacks off the back of this guy's backpack, uh, you can see of course that the you know the, the brass ring and then of course the uh, you know the kind of the, the metallic uh, lead belcher color there really coming together um, <clears throat> a little bit of work uh, picking through all of the cabling but uh, uh, I think it really came out in the end you can see the skull and the and the metal working together on the on the plague grenade there or the blight grenade there so lots of detail coming out with these guys uh, the next piece that we're going to do is we're going to bring out a big pile of color and we're going to be using um, a fist in red on our robes Okay, so I've collected together uh, a bunch of our guys with, uh, you know, fabric robes, things like that. So this guy's got, uh, uh, he's got kind of a, a cape coming across the back. Uh, this dude in here, he's got a little bit of a tabard coming off the bottom. And of course, this guy has his big cowl that goes over top and his cape in behind. So all we're going to do for this is anytime we see any kind of fabric, obviously now, uh, we're just going to use our Mephiston Red. And we're just going to bring in that really punchy uh, red color 
uh, which really brings out a lot of detail. And super simple, just going to work our way through and make sure we get a nice, decent coat. So I'll, I'll just do two thin coats of this Mephiston Red on anything that is fabric. The nice thing about the Mephiston Red is that it's a base color, so of course uh, we can go over any of the, uh, if we went over or we're a little sloppy or you know in a hurry on the uh, on the chain mail here, uh, the red base will just go right over top of it, so it works out really well. All right, so with that shock of red being applied here, uh, you get tons of color going on with these guys, and it's not conflicting because it's all kind of in that same tonal range that uh, the reds and the purples, and of course the green contrasting against the purple, uh, lots of punch and flavor on these guys now, which is great. Now, I did add a few things in here, um, specifically um, doing the vents here on the on the plasma guns. So uh, I, th I think I'm gonna go with the GW approach and uh, go with the darker red, uh, kind of the chaotic plasma. It looks a little more you know, dark and ominous, ominous and sinister. So uh, really digging that. So uh, next up, we're going to do the uh, kind of straps and the bandoliers, basically any kind of the, 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 the pliable leathery type stuff. And for that, I'm going to use Steel Legion Drab. And in addition to that, I'll also do the, the wood features on the bolters as well. Now, I know I could go with a whole bunch of different colors uh, for the, the wood grains, but uh, unfortunately, you know, it just uh, it gets a little heavy when we're kind of playing with all of our colors. And I mean, it's it's you know, it's a tonal range. It's brown as well. So uh, starting off here with the, the bandolier, we'll... Uh, We'll, we'll do the, the, the same tone on the wood in a second, but we'll go uh, with the bandolier first. Okay, and after the bandolier, we'll do any of the strapping that we're going to have on our bolters here. In addition to that, we'll uh, work on the wood feature here of the bolter. So you'll see here that some of them have them at the bottom where the grip is, and some of them have that wood uh, set up kind of across the top. Okay, and um, in addition to that, uh, we're going to be doing any of the piping here uh, that isn't uh, exposed cable. So any of the cabling, uh, any of the cable covers, again, just to keep the tonal range similar, I'm going to do in the Steel Legion Drab as well. And then on the champion here, I'll do his respirator as well, because that'll be all in leather, with the skin kind of fused on in a really cool and gross way. Uh, just making sure that I leave any of that exposed metal still silver. And we'll get his holster as well, kind of tucked in here. Uh, we'll do that in the Steel Legion Drab as well. And then finally, any of the strapping that we have uh, on the plague swords here, you'll see that we've got, or the plague knives, I guess. So any of their swords here we'll do in the Steel Legion Drab as well. Uh, the wraps, things like that. Just to give them that nice kind of old school leather look to them. And finally, one of the blight grenades here. Uh, I'm just going to do the hair on the... Uh, the corpse head that's mounted into the grenade just to give it a little bit of visual kind of distinction a little more depth to it all right so we've got all the leather stuff all finished up we've got the uh cabling all done the uh the leather bound straps at the back anything that's got kind of a leathery texture to it holsters things like that all finished up and uh i'll be honest i mean as you go through these models there's so much detail on them that I keep finding new things. Um, and you forget little spots and little things like that. So I imagine once we get the wash on, we'll see even more detail. But at least let's get the base colors down. And we can always touch up uh, later on as well. So if it looks like I'm missing stuff and you guys are picking it up on the video, I probably am. But um, as we wash it and we kind of do our final, um, you know, our highlights and we bring everything back up, we'll probably catch a whole lot of that detail. So um, next thing is a bad and black, and we're just going to do all the weapon casings uh, in a bad and black, and that should 
get us close to finish and into wash mode. So uh, I'm really looking forward to that because, well, to be honest, it's the, it's the best part. It's the most rewarding part of the whole thing is just seeing all that depth and detail come together. So uh, I will carefully go through here and I will do all of our weapon casings, uh, our, our, our plasma gun here, all that stuff. We'll do all that stuff in a bad and black. Okay, so we've got everything all done up here. We've got our base colors all on. And I just went ahead and did our bases up here as well so they match the rest of the army. And uh, they left a few things blank. Uh, for example, the little bloaty fly, his, his wings up here, and the smoke coming off the sensor. We're going to be doing that at a later in a later video when I do the, um, uh, the big uh, plague champion guy. Uh, and I think what we're going to do now is we're just going to move on to our wash stage. So I went around and did a bit of a dummy check. I uh, really liked kind of the way things work out the colors look solid uh, nice contrasts and of course it's going to be nice and bright when we're all done so what I'm going to do now is apply my homemade wash here now the wash that I use is 50% floor wax it is 25% agrax earth shade and 25% null oil as well and you can see that the floor wax really does a really solid job of sneaking in and grabbing all of that all of that detail there so even on the sensor smoke the the stuff coming out of here uh, it's going to give it tinge it a little bit grayish kind of a brownie gray and that's fine for now but we'll go over top of that later the wash coat is nice and thin and it'll allow us to to go back and revisit so I'll just work my way through and make sure that these guys are all washed up. Okay, so the wash is all done now and we can see that we've got lots of depth, deepness, de deepiness, whatever, to the model. And it's great because it brings out all the detail and allows us to pick out all the extra pieces. So it's actually easier to paint now that it's been washed, which is great. So uh, I'm going to start initially with the armor. Now, the armor is going to be a bit of an odd uh, an odd way to do it, but uh, what we're looking for is this kind of cool, kind of dirty, streaky, out in the rain too long type of look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start basing this back up with uh, Nurgling Green. Now, it's going to run different from a regular highlight. Obviously, from the highlights, if we were highlighting this, even in kind of a, a striated way, we kind of go to the top and work our way down. But we're going to do that with Screaming Skull earlier. So we're going to do a lower highlight, if you will, on the bottom. So I chose a very large piece here to kind of illustrate that. So I'm going to start with Nurgling Green. And I'm going to do the bottom two thirds of this armor plate. Now we'll do this for knees, we'll do this for the legs, with the arms, uh, shoulder pauldrons, all that. But let's just start with this. So I'm just going to do this and do a line uh, or a series of lines. And it's just going to be this really kind of streaky uh, motion to it. And we're going to go about two thirds of the way up that space, making sure that we leave all that, that awesome detail in there as well. You can already see it gives us a little bit of a streaky kind of look and feel to it. What I'll then do, uh, once I've got this kind of streaked up, what I'll then do, and I, I'll repeat this on all the plates here, what I'll then do is take our screaming skull, give it a good shake here, and it doesn't have to be while it's still wet, but this is just such a thin uh, coat, it doesn't really matter, it dries pretty quickly. But what I'm going to do is I'm then going to take my Screaming Skull, nice thinned out layer of it here, and I'm then going to match that streak down and maybe go over top of it a little bit, depending. Make sure you don't have too much paint on your brush, and then I'm just going to go down with that Screaming Skull in that streaked format there. Now I'm still leaving as much of that detail up at the top as possible but I'm just working my way down these armor plates. Now, some tricky spots will be up in here. Now, if you screw up at all or anything like that, don't worry about it. You can always go in with a little bit more wash. And actually, I usually do with the, with the kind of organic stuff. I'll usually go in with a little bit more wash and finish that up. So you can see we get this really cool kind of organic uh, streaky look to it and we got the low light of the uh, nurgling green which has been washed we've got the nurgling green itself and then we've got the streaky kind of bleached bone up top as well okay so I'll illustrate that one more time but I'll do it on a different panel here I'll take my nurgling green 
and I'll do it on the uh, the whole leg panels here. So what I do is I'd start on the foot down here in streaks, and then I would work my way up the armor. So two thirds on this panel, just nice and streaky. The nice thing about this is it doesn't have to be neat. As a matter of fact, the more untidy it is, the nicer it is. So two thirds up that panel, two thirds up the knee pad. Let's go up this way. And then two thirds up the thigh panel up here with that streaky scheme. All right. And then clean the brush, grab some screaming skull. And then with the screaming skull, making sure I don't have a lot on my brush here, uh, I'll just do the streaking uh, down and I'll repeat that down here. And I'll work my way around and then I'll do it down here as well. So just nice and simple and easy, but it gives you that really kind of cool worn, worn down effect. All right, so I'm going to go along and do that. Uh, also with the screaming skull now, I'll pick out all the major highlights of the bone and it's almost like an edge highlight. You've got lots of color already there and I don't think they'll keep the bony protrusions particularly uh, clean in this case here when everything else is kind of degrading. So we'll do the uh, all the bone elements that come out whether it's a skull, uh, we'll do the major highlights of the skulls. Okay and of course uh, anything that's a blister that we want to make this kind of pus filled blister because you know it's awesome and nice and gross. Any of these blisters that you want you just take a bit of screaming skull and we'll just kind of do the highlight of the bump and we'll come back and then um, make that nice and gross later. But no matter where it is in the armor, we'll do the bumps with that. And any of the other details that you see that we've done in Screaming Skull previously. So I'm gonna go through streak all the armor. So the Nurgling Green first and then come back in and touch the skulls, uh, or sorry, touch all the, uh, uh, the Screaming Skull pieces after as well. Now I'm just iterating through all the armor here. Now, if you run into a setup where you've got either a, a zombie head or you've got some uh, a dude with his helmet off, uh, it's going to be the exact same procedure. Uh, the boys don't have that great of a health regimen, so uh, our identified kind of objectives that we did before is we wanted it to match um, the armor and the skin with the flesh. We didn't want it to to have any kind of differentiation between them. So uh, very much like we've done with our zombie stuff in the past, we're just going to take our Nurgling Green and we're going to highlight all the kind of the major highlights of the flesh. So we're just going to do an overbrush of everything, just kind of pick up on things. Now, of course, leaving it nice and dirty is cool, uh, but we're trying to do an organized dirty, if that's a thing. And uh, as before, just going to go over the major highlights. Uh, he's got a couple extra rolls in the neck here, so we're going to... Make sure we get all that in there. And then uh, the same will be done with the zombie heads. So if we have uh, the zombie heads here, uh, I'm just going to go over all the major highlights with the Nurgling Green. So kind of the, the, the cheeks, the chins, and you can actually see I missed a tentacle there, see? So they always sneak up, so I'm gonna be constantly uh, rebuilding these as we go. All right, so once I've got that, then I'll do an edge highlight uh, with the Screaming Skull. So with the Screaming Skull now, same thing. And of course I'll pick out all the bone on the face and all the other stuff that's there as well. But for this one here, uh, just gonna do a very kind of high level highlight. And wherever the option exists, I'm going to do it streaky as well. Not that you're gonna get a lot of that but I just want to make sure that we've got some kind of rough texture to these guys. Obviously the protruding bones up there are gonna get a little extra pop. And you can see the difference between the two, the highlighted bone, and it's very subtle, but the highlighted bone definitely looks like bone at the end. And the highlighted flesh just looks like kind of pale, you know, kind of dying flesh as well. 
All right, so I'll keep going around with these guys, uh, but I just wanted to make a side note, if you run into any of the uh, any of the facial features, like the zombie heads or any of the, uh, you know, the guys without helmets, that, that's how we approach that one as well. So as I was trucking along, I noticed that some of these things aren't coming off as bold as a contrast as I like. So for example, you'll see here that the shoulder pads are a little muted, and you can see here the same thing is going on with the skulls. Now these ones are pretty decent, but um, so what if I want a little bit more contrast, or if I've got wanting a little bit more contrast between the bone color and kind of the armor itself to make it stand out visually. Now all I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back in with a little bit of wash, and you can see I've already done it uh, here on the uh, the chest piece and if you want to kind of deepen out any of the holes a little bit just tuck a little bit of wash in there with a detail brush and all should be well so i just figured i'd show that off real quick because it's kind of an integral part of what we're trying to uh trying to accomplish here so i'm going to take just a little bit of wash on my brush and anytime i'm looking for just a shade more detail i just kind of toss it in. Um, now, when it came to these, you know, center pieces here, I just went around it and let the wash settle in. So I'll do the same thing here. I'll just kind of work my way around with the wash. And once it settles in, it'll be nice and kind of contrasty and, and decent, actually. So I'll do the same thing here as well. And the same thing in here as well. Now, obviously not trying to repaint the model, but just trying to give it a little bit more uh, of that pop compared to what it was before. Now you don't want too much pooling up, but there you go. Uh, let me show you with the uh, skeletons on here, or the skeletons, the uh, skulls on here as well. Just take a little bit of extra wash, and then I'll go in here, and where it's just a little bit muted, again, just kind of work your way around, just a little bit here. And all that does is it just pops out that extra little bit of detail, and gives a little bit more depth to the skulls. Now I'll often do a pass on my models, but I figured because these ones are so much like this, uh, you know, so, you know, the, the colors are so similar uh, that I just give you a quick idea of what I'm doing. So filling in any holes or calling out any kinds of detail uh, down here on his uh, knee is perfect. Uh, if, you know, you've got a little bit of a wooden grain, you can, you can put that in there as well. So what, whenever you, I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect all the time. I think it just has to be, uh, you know, you just have to keep working at it. So I uh, figured I'd share that as I was trucking along because they might look a little more detailed on my end than your end. So I figured I'd just share what I was doing. Okay, so I went through and I did a pass on all the armor. Uh, now I'm going to do the colors and I'm going to start with Mephiston Red and I'm just going to do an overbrush over top of the existing uh, cowling or robes, um, any anything that's kind of fabric or, 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 or denoted by the red here. Uh, I'm just going to go in and I'm going to pick out all the major highlights. Now, uh, obviously you can see the shading has left um, you know some of the holes in the fabric, things like that. But I'm just going to go over the major elements, uh, leaving that little bit of uh, kind of darker shade uh, wherever it has settled. So uh, just going over the major highlights, and I'm going to leave as much of that recess shading as I can on the cloak. And on the front and the cowl, it'll be the same thing. So uh, paying very close attention to detail here, uh, you can see that there's this little bit of recess shading and just kind of overbrushing anything that wasn't uh, shaded in there, just to bring that pop of color back. Okay, so I've done a pass over all the models going over the major highlights here with the uh, with the Mephiston Red. Uh, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some Wild Rider Red and I'm going to repeat the process, only now I'm just going to go after the kind of the, uh, you know, the, the, the strongest of the edge highlights. So I'm going to pick, you know, just kind of these extreme highlights here of the fabric and just bring a little bit of that pop of color by going over the edges. Now, I can also do some striations here uh, along the bottom just to kind of weather in that that fabric a little bit. So just again, adding that little pop of extra color and you can just build it up however you like. But I want a nice, bright, colorful red. Um, the, the rest of the model is going to be you know, fairly muted in terms of its colors, but it's going to be lots of contrast. I like the big, bright uh, colors. So if you're playing Nurgle, I mean, everyone that you've seen, uh, they've all got fairly drab uh, kind of armies. You know, they'll, they'll paint the base colors and they'll wash it and they'll say, well, they're Nurgle, they're supposed to be dirty. And I'm okay with that, but I think just doing a very kind of bright, uh, you know, kind of standout scheme works pretty well. 
So uh, I'll continue on, sorry, continue. And so I'll continue on with, uh, with this here. And then um, in addition to that, uh, I'm going to do the uh, plasma guns the same way. So I'm just going to apply a bit of a dry brush. So I've got um, just on my palette here, I'm just kind of wiping it off on a tissue just so I have a little bit. And I'm going to go over top of the, the vents on the plasma gun. Now, this is my ratty, crazy ratty old brush. Now, you will get onto the black, the Abaddon black on here as well, but I just want just a little bit of color uh, for this. And then, there we go. Now, if you get it on the Abaddon black, that's not a big deal. I'll just take a little bit of extra uh, Abaddon black here and I'll just go back over top just to make sure that it's all tidied up and nice and clean. So again, I'll just go over top of this. Now, obviously it's not gonna make that big of a deal that it's been washed already because, um, well, you know, it's not gonna get any darker than the black, so. All right. So I'll continue along with that uh, highlight. Um, I've got the other plasma gun on one of the on one of the champions. And in addition to that, um, I've got a whole bunch of capes and cloaks and things like that. So uh, I'll work my way through doing the Wild Rider Red. All right, so I've done my pass over top of all these guys and uh, I've highlighted all the red. You can see the dry brush on the plasma gun. Obviously we saw that in the last one. And of course the red on the uh, cloak looks really, really good. And so I kind of went through and did that. I also did uh, our friend here with the gums, the, the gut gums, question mark. Uh, and uh, again, it really pops that red out. Uh, and it's such a visceral color that your eyes immediately pick up on it. So uh, really liking the way that turned out. So uh, next piece that we're going to do to put these guys away. The next piece that we're going to do now is we're going to be working on the uh, leathery pieces and we're going to use uh, Steel Legion Drab for that and then we're going to do an edge highlight of Carrick Stone to go with. So uh, let's start with the Steel Legion Drab. Um, so yeah, they're really starting to come together now. Lots of definition, uh, just, a, just a bunch of sweet models and I still keep finding details uh, in these models. So uh, really, really impressed with, with the, the models all together. So for this, I'm just going to be doing an overbrush. Again, just picking out uh, all the pieces that are, uh, you know, kind of leathery. So uh, the bandolier in this case here, the this strap on the bolter. Again, leaving all those low lights where the where the ink is or the wash has settled in there, which is great. Uh, and then I'll be doing the cabling as well. So you can see on these guys, they've all got this little bit extra cabling. So just doing an overbrush, leaving as much of the uh, low lights there as as possible. Oh, and in addition to that, we'll do the hair as well here. So just the overbrush. Uh, it's almost like a dry brush, only just kind of angled off to the side and just picking up the high details, uh, leaving as much of that, uh, that washed down uh, colored area as we can. I'll also be doing the same overbrush on the wood elements here as well. And I'll carry that through everyone else. But before I go on that, uh, I'm going to take my Carrick Stone here. And I'm just going to do an edge highlight. I'm just going to do an edge highlight. Uh, on the bandoliers, it's going to be fairly simple. I'll just go over the edges here. And just picking out the very edges to give it that highlight. Okay, and then on top of that, uh, I'll be doing the edges of the bolter, uh, the bolter strap here. And then very lightly, uh, just going over the extreme edges of the wooden effect here as well. So I know we're doing leather and wood and all that together at the same time, but uh, we don't want too many conflicting colors. Uh, and it's also a little easier on the pocketbook as well to do that. So I'll do the, just the edges of the hair, just to kind of make them pop out a little bit here. And of course, I'll do just a couple of the very fine edges. So just kind of where the light would catch on the cabling. Wonderful. So I'll keep trucking along with this and we'll get back to the metallics. 
All right, so now with all the leathery bits done and all the cables all kind of sorted out, uh, we got lots of depth, which is nice. Uh, it's a separate color, but it's still in that same kind of tonal range. So I'm really happy with, with that there. So let's move on to our next piece. And we're going to work with our metallics. So we've got our Rune Fang steel and our Fulgurite copper. So we'll start off with the Rune Fang steel. And anything that is large format or plate or something like that, uh, we're going to use the, the Rune Fang steel. And I'm just going to do the edge on the outside. I won't be doing any kind of overbrushing or anything like that. I just want to call out the edge uh, to give it a little bit of a sharpness of detail. Okay, and uh, you know, so things like the, the magazine, the, you know, the little clips, the little bits and pieces like that. So anything kind of large format mechanical for sure. Uh, if you want, you can do the, the cabling uh, just by doing a very light uh, type of dry brush on there. You'll be able to do it at the top as well. But the idea is not to paint it uh, a big silver. The idea here is going to be primarily to preserve that kind of rich, uh, darker, kind of uh, gr uh, grimy metal. Uh, so we want to keep as much of that uh, grime on there as, as possible. Uh, if we're looking at things like our uh, blight grenade here, just doing the very edges on the outside, keeping a lot of that depth. Uh, you'll see here with our stacks as well. Uh, I'm just going to do just a little bit of highlight on here um, just to keep again all that depth inside of our design here. Uh, the plague knives here, uh, again, just around the very outside and just a very thin, uh, thin highlight to provide a little bit of light to it. I'm just gonna go around the edge of the blight grenade. So keeping all that depth in there, but just picking out kind of the very edges of the rune fang. All right. And then with our fulgurite copper, I'm going to do the same, the same type of thing. I'm only going to be going after the very edges. Uh, and so instead of an overbrush, we bring lots of color back. We're going to just do just a little bit of that super bright copper. And we're going to do it just on the very, very edges, just to give that little bit of sheen, but I wanna preserve as much of the depth as I can there in the shoulder plates. So you can see that nice fine line that's there and maybe just touch on the rivets as well. We'll do the same with the stacks. All right, so just the edges and yeah, so I wanna keep all that depth in there wherever I can. All right, I'll keep plugging on with this. Uh, this is gonna take a little bit of time. There's lots and lots of detail on these guys, but uh, yeah, it'll look, it'll look really good, really sharp when we're done. All right, with the metals all done, we're now gonna move on to Eschen Gray, and we're just going to do the casings of all of our weapons. Now, there's not a whole lot on the models with that in mind, uh, but there's a little bit, so let's uh, let's get going. So uh, I'm just gonna thin a little bit out on a palette beside me here, and then all I'm going to do is just a very simple edge highlight all the way around the black. Uh, we didn't need to low light it too much because, well, you know, it's black. And um, so I'm just gonna do an edge highlight all the way around. Uh, of the models here. And then next up, we'll do our white scar. Now, white scar is going to go on to uh, a bunch of different things. There, anything that is a boil. So anything that kind of you know, is kind of pussing out through the armor, or what have you, uh, we're just going to do in white scar. All right, now that white really pops the model crazy huge. Uh, and this guy's nice because he's got lots of these kind of boils on him. So we'll leave a little bit of that, uh, that darker shade in there as well. Uh, any of the eyes that you want to do, whether it's on the models themselves or on goggles up here like this, we'll do in white. Okay, uh, and obviously there's boils all around. And in addition to that, uh, we'll do uh, any of the teeth. So we're just gonna do just kind of like the, the highlighted areas of the teeth to really make them pop out in white. Now I know their hygiene isn't gonna be fantastic on these guys, but 
we'll do the teeth just so they really stand out. We'll do the edges of any of the bones and just like the very extreme edge and even that might, that might be a bit, no, it's not too bad actually. Uh, we'll just do the very kind of extreme edges of any of the sharp bones because they're like teeth, right? So we'll have that in there as well. It boils all around. And we'll do our little fly's wings here. So what I'm going to do is just follow this outer edge. Uh, so the leading edge I'll do in white like this. Okay, and then I'll just trail back from there. So I'll just do striations from there for the wings. Maybe some striations at the front as well. But I'll just give them a little bit of texture that you wouldn't normally get. And then finally, uh, the Death Guard, the Plague Marines here, they've all got these little talons. So I'm going to go in and just kind of very gently brush over their talons there. All right, so I will work my way through. I uh, will be doing the talons. We'll be doing any of the big teeth, any boils, any eyes, the wings of the fly, you name it. So we'll be working our way around and we'll be right back. Okay, we can totally see that the white accents have all come together now, uh, adding lots of pop to the model. The teeth really stand out uh, on the face and on the gut and all of that, uh, looking really, really sharp. Uh, next up, we're going to be doing the tentacles. And the tentacles are all going to be um, uh, in a kind of a purpley color. So we're going to do these gradiated shades. Um, so we've got our uh, darker purple on now. It's been washed and all that. And then we're going, going to go with a Zarius purple. Uh, and we're going to use that as our highlight uh, for the tentacles. So this is going to add a whole bunch of extra pop to the model. I know we've got the deep reds on some of them. Uh, but this one here is going to be a little bit, uh, just a little bit brighter in terms of other colors. So uh, you'll see that there's a whole bunch of bumps and things on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to just do kind of the major highlights. And I'm going to start uh, making sure that I leave the majority of it exposed. And so this will be almost like a, a one third kind of highlight going after the bumps and all that. All right. And then I'll do the same with the other tentacles here as well. So I want to leave a lot of that darker uh, shade going on there. And he's got one on his tongue and all that. So just kind of the major highlights there. He's got a couple of them sneaking around back here as well. We'll just do those. And just trying to add a little bit of life to the color there. Then I'm going to move on to Gene Steeler Purple, and uh, it should dry fairly quickly. I put some pretty light coats on here, but for Gene Steeler Purple, I'm going to pick out all the little bumps and just kind of the extreme highlights of the model there. All right, so let's dive in. So with Gene Steeler Purple now, again, I'm going to do the, the same type of idea, but I'm going to go in after all the little spots, and then I'll just use just kind of this nice kind of striated, uh, just rougher, rougher kind of uh, highlight here. And just much less than the other highlight. And I'm just going to tap in the color of the tentacle. So it just gives it a little bit more uh, personality here. And just highlights the tentacle so that it stands out. And then I'm just going to do the extreme highlight on the tentacle here with the Gene Steeler purple. All right, I'm just going to play around with this until I'm happy. All right, uh, so the tentacles are all done now and you can see that it's just tons of color and vibrance uh, coming out of these models now. Uh, the exact opposite of what I think the trap is with Nurgle is to have them be all muddy and dark. Now. With all this brightness and these kind of similar uh, colors, the the Nurgling green, the bleached bone, the white, uh, it's actually a really good idea, I think, to just add a whole pile of contrast. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to use our Micron uh, 0 0.005 pen. And I'll move uh, Buddy out of the way here for a second. And what we're going to do is we're just going to go in 
and mark out the difference between uh, any of uh, the colors. So anytime there's like a raised detail or where two textures kind of meet, I'm just going to run around just to kind of add a little bit of a little bit of pop there. In addition to that, uh, anytime two colors meet, uh, we're going to run the pen there as well. And what it's going to do is really dramatically black line the 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 difference between the different colors. And uh, looks really, really good. Now you saw that I did it on the tentacle. I'm also going to do it on the armor here as well. So again, where the two colors meet, uh, we'll do that. It looks good. Hopefully not screw up too much. Oh, there's a dent in there. I'm good. Uh, and in addition to that, these little rivets here, I'm going to call them out as well. And it just makes them highlight or just kind of pops them out so it's quite dramatic on the table. So I'll work my way through and you'll see it'll really bring out all the, uh, the metal and armor combinations. Um, even back here, these little, these little ridges at the back can get called out. Uh, it'll especially work on the, the legs back here because, you know, they don't get settled in a, enough with all the wash. But it'll dramatically bring those out. Okay, anywhere two colors meet. Uh, anytime there's a, a change in texture, I'm going to highlight it with my Micron pen. All right, with the black lining all done, our Plague Marines are essentially complete. There's a few things I want to come back and revisit. Uh, that will be all the smoke coming out of the sensors, and we're going to combine that with some of the wizardry effects on the other models, so the, the big wizard there. So I'm going to leave that as a, as a kind of a dirty gray for now. But we will be revisiting that in another video. The next thing that I really wanted to mention was how bright these guys came out. The very similar colors of the white, the nurgling green, and the bone, uh, all tied together with the black lining, really kind of defining them and separating them out. Uh, but they look like they've been well maintained. These guys look like they're still fighting, uh, you know, fighting machines. But everything's kind of streaky and dirty and, and kind of just grimy. Uh, but at the same time, the models aren't muddy at all. So these guys are going to really pop on the table. Really happy with the way they turned out. So I uh, just wanted to say uh, thanks a lot for watching, guys. This has been a fantastic one. This is our part one of our video, uh, of our video series, I should say, on our Death Guard. So we started off with our Plague Marines. Uh, we're going to be doing some Pox Walkers and, uh, and all the Sorcerers and all that. So we'll slowly be working our way through this set, but I'm very happy with the way things turned out. So if you liked the video, obviously hit that like button. It helps me out a ton. It gets the channel out there. It helps me out a ton. And uh, it, it's, it's just good news all around. Uh, but if you want more videos just like this, please hit that subscribe button. Uh, it'll give you all the notifications of all of our future videos. Uh, and hit that bell too, that little bell right beside the subscribe button. And you'll get all the notifications for sure. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. I uh, hope it was of insane value for you. This was so much fun to do as a project. And we'll catch you in the next video.